Hello from wherever you might be watching us from. Welcome to the special broadcast that is brought to you courtesy of the ICTJ and their partners. I am Ansman Eso Nyasi and uh, here with me is um, um, Ms. Antisira Nau, who, I mean, works with Anaked. Of course, you'll get to know more about Anaked. This is not the first time we're having them on this platform. Um, but on my, to my immediate left is Ms. Kadija Tukuyate, who works with the Victim Support Unit at the TRRC. Ladies, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you, you. Ansman. Glad to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to have you both here. Um, for Kadija too, yes, this is her first time, but yes, um, and this year is not new to this platform and uh, to this channel as well. So we're expecting um, another guest probably later in the program. Uh, but for now, I mean, they're here with us, and my role here is to help guide this discussion. Now, following the change of government in 2017, the Gambia government rolled out, um, you know, a series of transitional justice processes, and this also included the setting up of a truth commission. And the truth commission, as we know, um, you know, its mandate will soon end, um, you know, and we look forward to the submission of its final report, uh, you know, in, 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 in a couple of weeks. So once the final report is submitted, its mandate would end. What happens next uh, would form a great uh, part of our discussion um, today. But first, I would engage them to tell us briefly about um, the various uh, institutions they are representing and the work that they do. Let me start with Khadija to um, tell us briefly about the Victim Support Unit. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, SO. Um, my name is Khadija Tukuyate. As um, he said, I, I am the Victim Support Coordinator of the TRRC. Um, at the Victim Support Unit, we are engage, engaged with the um, victim welfare activities, mm -hmm. ranging, from, um, ranging from medical assistance uh, towards to the um, registration process of the TRRC. From there, we escort them to the various departments that I um, necessary in the work of the TRRC, mm -hmm. that is the statement taking department, and also we put them through the various activities that we have, the support services available at the TRRC. And also, um, it is part of the work of the victim support unit to make sure that um, the victims um, are safe and secure at the TRRC, and also um, their statements are confidential because um, confidentiality is part of the process of the TRRC. One can't, uh, one can't give uh, his or her status. Um, and at the end of the day, the status is being revealed outside. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep that confidentiality within the TRRC. And also, so um, related to other, um, you know, uh, partners that, will, that work directly with the TRRC. Mm -hmm. So basically, these are some of the activities that we do at the Victim Support Unit. All right, um, Adisira, take us through Anaked and the work that you do. Uh, thank you very much, um, Ansumana. I am the country representative for Anaked, and that's the African Network Against Extrajudicial Killings and Enforced Disappearances. And we work very closely with the TRRC in our activities. Anaked is a victim led organization. Basically, it means that it was co uh, victims came together and set up the organization and uh, now working in the transitional justice process in the Gambia. And uh, what we work on, as the name implies, we work around um, forced disappearances, victims that have been forcefully disappeared by the, by the state, uh, or state agents, and also um, summary executions, people that have been killed without have unlawful killing, basically. So that's been our work. We work around those two human rights violations. And like I mentioned, we work closely with the TRRC. We have um, projects, and uh, one of them is the TR, what we call the TRRC Digest. What the TRRC Digest does, it, it summarizes the testimonies, public testimonies of victims that have testified at the, at the, at the TRRC mm -hmm. and um, make them into a compact uh, publication and, and publish it online. Mm -hmm. We also have been printing, started printing it physical copies. And those summaries are also translated into the four main local languages mm -hmm. because there's a, we believe that there's a gap when it comes to having access to the information from the TRRC. Mm -hmm. So when they are translated, they are also aired through the, um, on the community radios. Every session when it's done, we, we summarize them, publish them, and then translate them into the four local languages. That's one of the biggest projects we have around the TRRC, and it's been going with all the sessions. We are, now, we are publishing, about to publish our uh, 20th session, and we hope to, by the time, in, in by September, October, finish all the 23 um, versions of the publications. And that's one of the biggest um, partnership or work we have around the T, uh, with the T, that 
centers around the truth commission but we are also involved in other um, aspects of the TJ process and mm -hmm. I'm sure we can delve into that later on as we the program proceeds. Perfect, perfect. So um, that is a brief rundown of uh, the various institutions that they work for and the work that they do. So um, Karija, one of the main mandates of the Truth Commission is to uh, give reparations to mm -hmm. deserving victims, or let me say to victims. Um, so your unit is in charge of that. Could you take us through the reparations process? It's one of the main um, points of discussion as far as this program is concerned. Take us through the reparations process and how do you go about identifying who gets what? Okay, um, thank you. Um, the, the TRRC has passed um, a reparations regulations mm -hmm. that, that um, identifies um, the types of reparations that the commission may grant yeah. to victims. And this includes um, financial reparations in the form of um, final reparation to victims on their abuses or harms that they suffer. But um, considering the fact that um, we have different forms of violations and abuses mm -hmm. during the period, the payment or, or the, the, the computation to victims differs mm -hmm. um, in the sense that they are not um, the same, looking at their nature of violation. So this is why it ranges from um, here, um, um, unlawful killing, disappearance, you also have detention and so part of it. Those are the um, parts, parts of um, the, the main themes that we have to deal with. Um, during the reparations uh, process. Mm -hmm. But then also look, looking at the, um, the type of abuse or um, um, violation that one might, might um, went through, mm -hmm. it goes with um, gravities, levels of gravity. Like um, in the sense that um, when you, 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 you were um, arrested mm -hmm. and detained, you were tortured, we look at the type of torture that you went through. Mm -hmm. This could be um, torture leading to um, serious harm or injury, mm -hmm. and also to or permanent health yeah also. yeah permanent um, health complications, mm -hmm. and also we have a type of torture that um, only looks at um, the torture leading to severe injury, but no permanent um, injury or okay. permanent in nature, and also we have torture um, that is. Um, Torture, not leading to any harm or injury, mm -hmm. or um, or a, a serious nature, permanent nature. So these are the types of torture we have. We also have um, uh, we also have uh, physical assault. Working with physical assault, there are different types of assaults. One might tell you that I have been slapped, what we call um, physical assault by fist. We also have physical assault um, by boots. Mm -hmm. So some we are stamped. So we look at um, those ones and then their, their level of gravity, physical assault by shooting, their level of gravity, how many ti times were you slapped, how many times were you um, kicked or stepped on. Those are the um, levels of gravity that we also looked into and attach it to one's um, abuse or violation. So it's like um, the reparations that one is accorded mm -hmm. would depend largely on the abuse, you know, you may have suffered. Exactly. Um, but also in giving out these reparations, are you, do you also consult with the victims to ensure that they are part of it, that it's not, you know, just the TRRC deciding for them? Okay. Um, at the beginning of the TRRC, mm. what we do at the uh, um, victim support unit includes um, registration of victims. Yeah. During this registr um, registration process, we take your bio details, your biography, mm -hmm. and also uh, we ask you your, um, your, your major concerns. Mm -hmm. What are your um, in immediate needs? And during this process, we will also take details of your immediate needs ac according to your narration. This form part of the part of the uh, the details that, that we look for uh, in de dealing with um, victims. So um, during the um, reparations process, what we do is um, 
after before passing the reparations regulations, we went through um, a series of um, stakeholder consultations. We had consultations with victims. So um, during these consultations, issues came up, mm -hmm. and, and um, we it's a it's a form of um, needs assessment that we went through, okay. and most of the needs were out before developing the um, regulations. And after developing the regulations, it was shared um, widely with victims. Mm -hmm. um, the majority, I can say, of the victims had access to the repar reparations regulations. Mm -hmm. And this is not basically a TRRC thought. In one part, um, one might think that it is um, basically TRRC's own thought, mm -hmm. but then um, it is not. Okay. Because at the beginning, we had um, consultations and, you know, Okay. So I actually asked that because I'm aware that you've been, the TRC has been giving out recommendation, I mean reparations rather to victims, um, but we've had, you know, a few complaints here and there. We've seen these things in the media, that's why I ask, um, mm. just at least, you know, mm. um, get your version of what happened. But uh, let me bring in Antisira now. Um, mm. We know that the Commission would soon uh, deliver its final report and recommendations to the President. And once that is done, the Commission's mandate ends right there. Um, what is the CSO's position as far as going forward is concerned um, to ensuring that there is continuity? Because we know we're heading into elections, and obviously, naturally, one would expect that, I mean, almost all attention would turn to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but how do we ensure that the TRC recommendations and, of course, the continuity of this process, uh, of course, that would ensure that victims, you know, um, would be given the care and attention that they need and that there is not a recurrence of, of, of what we've been through um, the past years. What is the CS, CSO's position as far as that is concerned, and especially with Anaked as well? How are you working towards that? Okay, thank you, Ansma. That's a, that's a very, very important question to ask, and uh, a lot of victims are concerned mm -hmm. and, uh, about what, is, what, what next, mm -hmm. especially with the reparations just started and not completed, yeah. and the way that it is going there still is going to be um, some leftovers. You cannot handle all of them within the period that is up to September 30th when their mandate is supposed to end. So there has to be mechanisms and, and, and channels that victims can, first of all, access what is going on, on what is ongoing right now, which is uh, the reparations yeah. that the TRRC had with their mandate, had um, made, the, made, made the payments and are continue making those compensations. So we need to now look at how does that continue. Um, with the with that, I believe, and Kajiro can correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's been there have been a handover to the Q office of the curator, that will continue that will continue some of the payments, okay. if not all of the money. So for the for the reparation payments, in terms of the rest of the um, the, the recommendations, mm -hmm. if we go back to the TRRC Act, we are we are going to be I mean, obviously the TRRC was set up as an act. So the TRRC Act says that the president has up to 30 days. Yeah. Before it can um, take, before it can take the recommendations, the report and recommendations to the National Assembly yeah. and share it with other uh, funders and, and UN, UN and, and um, EU agents mm -hmm. and any other um, any other body or institution that it may identify. So that's the first 30 days. So we have we're looking at October. Mm -hmm. Now the Act also allows the President and the Office of the President to, um, to ha up to six months mm -hmm. to put together uh, a white white paper to pr 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 propose a white paper which will now detail out the plans of how it plans on, uh, which will detail out what it plans to do, how it will is going to implement the recommendation. Okay. So if we're looking at that time, six months from September, we're looking yeah. at March. That will be after elections. Um, so we, I, I, we do not expect anything to happen from that time. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there's a lot of distraction. Yeah. And um, the important question is how do we make sure that uh, you know, the victims are not, this is not put on the back, back burner yeah. after, after, you know, because of the elections. Mm -hmm. um, it ha we have two scenarios. The current government comes back in and to the, into the field. Those are the two options. Either the current government to continue, you know, gains, uh, wins the elections and mm -hmm. continues its the second mandate, or we have a new government. Yeah. When we have the current government, you know, second time usually presidents are more relaxed because, and especially just after the elections. Yeah. So it could take some time. And when we do have a new uh, uh, if we do have a new uh, government, mm -hmm. n there could be what was plea, what the initial government, when, when this government pleaded when they came in the first time, mm -hmm. we need time. 
True. You know, we need time to do it. So it's a very tricky situation. So the CSO community have been working a lot in preparing for post-TRRC, mm -hmm. and this has not just started recently. We've been working a lot in preparing for post-TRRC, working with victims, working with the, the stake other stakeholders to make sure that the, 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 what has happened and what needs to happen stays uh, in the forefront. We are working with different institutions. The, the, the true under the leadership of Tango, yeah. the uh, civil society has formed what is called the, the, the uh, post CRC task force, which is the goal of that is really have activities that have been, there's a roadmap yeah. that has been put together where activities are going to be happening throughout this period until the white paper comes and even beyond continuing in the long term because uh, implementations of recommendations from two commissions around the world, they don't happen within three months, they don't yeah. happen within three years, it yeah. takes decades. We see Sierra Leone, we see Liberia, sure. they, you know, those were in the 90s and, and 80s and they're still ongoing, South Africa for example, so it's a, it's a long term process. So we, the, the, the civil society under the leadership of Tango has come together and uh, working up, put together a roadmap that will that has, is detailing out some of the proposing some of the activities that we will be engaging in to make sure that the, imp the recommendations stay in the f in the forefront yeah. regardless of what is happening around 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 the um, around the country and also engaging yeah. right now engaging the various political parties because obviously uh, they are they are the one contesting yeah. engaging the, working on engaging the various political parties to see what their positions are mm -hmm. and that could also help inform. Uh, the general public on you know who what candidate you should vote for yeah. were based on the you know what their plans are for the so d for the for the for implementing the the TRRC as as victims we don't expect anything less than fully and effective implementation of the so of the, the recommendations. Follow, the follow up on this: How important is it to have this discussion also um, included in our political discussion, especially um, given the period we're going into? It is vital. It is vital because that, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, is that that really is if as as a, as as citizens mm -hmm. that should be part of our decision making process and who to vote for. So it's very important that the the, the political parties yeah. are engaged during this period before the elections come in mm -hmm. and to find out what their plans are for for implementing the recommendations and see how serious they are about it as well so it is very very important thing that should happen and that is one of the elements that one of the things stakeholder in uh, um, engagement that the task force uh, the task force that has been set up under the leadership of tango yeah. is planning on putting together once the, um, the report recommendations have been submitted mm -hmm. planning on putting that together before the elections to make sure that uh, the the politicians the political the politicians are brought forward mm -hmm. and or the stakeholders of course to tell us what their plans are when it comes to implementing the recommendations to help us to help inform our decision about who to vote for so, so Karija, we know that um, a good number of victims um, are women um, how is your unit also working with these women as, as far as the reparations is concerned okay um, initially we had um, a sexual and gender-based violence committee yeah. that works with um, um, women of uh, human rights violations. Mm -hmm. And during the reparations pro processes, um, we are trying to make sure that um, their confidentiality is still kept. Mm -hmm. Because this is what we assured them in the beginning, so we have to maintain it. So um, we are paying them um, different from the other victims. Their payments are uh, different from other categories of um, violations mm -hmm. because we all understand they have suffered um, sexual violence, which has um, many forms. Mm -hmm. When we say sexual violence, um, it doesn't mean um, only mean rape. Yeah. It has different forms of SGBV mm -hmm. that we also look into. So in um, in this um, situation, we have to um, consider them part of the victims, but then special victims. Yeah. They could be special victims mm. because their treatment is uh, obviously different, different from the um, other victims. Mm -hmm. We can't uh, mix them with the other victims because most of them, they are, um, they, they are protected witnesses. They are not just like an, any other witnesses that we, 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 we dealt with. Yeah. They were protected witnesses. So still we, we have to uh, maintain their, um, their, their, their status. Mm -hmm. So in doing, doing this, we, have, um, we still have a group, group of people that um, have access to their um, statements and work directly to their um, reparations. Mm -hmm. They are called um, differently and then paid 
in a different form. When you come to the TRRC, maybe um, you will see different people receiving their reparations at different times. You will see women receiving both with men. Mm -hmm. But then looking at those, those women, uh, you might not know who actually is an SGBV victim. Mm -hmm. You might not know. Other than those that, um, that uh, gave their testimonies um, publicly, mm -hmm. for those ones, um, one can understand that they were alive on TV. But other than that, um, they are basically protected by the TRRC. So special attention is given to exactly. women, yeah. um, I mean, SGBV victims. Yeah. So Antisira, we, we know that Anaked and the CSOs are very important partners as far as the TGA process is concerned. Um, in your work, what are some of the um, gaps, or do I say challenges, that you people have identified um, or that you think really needs looking into um, as far as the entire TJ process is concerned, uh, but also bearing in mind reparations um, and justice as well, and, and even the full implementation of the reports, of the recommendations, rather? Uh, yes, I would say the biggest gap ha is information. Yeah. Uh, information for the victims and information for the, um, for the CSOs that are that are that are working with the victims directly, mm. and um, I think yes, it, it's um, the TI, the Kajet uh, talked about the reparation, for example, and the consultations that were had in the beginning for the regu regula regulations for informating regulations. And that was that was done. I was actually there, part of the team that was um, invited. We Anaked was invited, and, and I represented Anaked at that um, at that moment. But we uh, we believe that there there was a lot of opportunity that were lost in mm -hmm. engaging more with the, with the CSO communities, okay. uh, okay. CSO's communities. Not necessarily because of the, just on the side of this, uh, the TRRC, mm -hmm. but also I think I would say on the side of the CSO's, really just um, each staying in your corner and doing your own thing rather than collaborating more. Mm -hmm. So the effect is being felt right uh, more now as we get closer to, towards the end mm -hmm. and it, the work is now beginning. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now, the TRRC's, I think I would say the TRRC might have been the uh, quote unquote easier part mm -hmm. because the implementation is going to be the hardest part. It's a long, it's a long term, it's a long run, and it involves so many other resources yeah. that are going to be needed. So I think the biggest gap has been information, and we are we are paying the price right now. So right now everybody's scrambling left, right, and center, especially mm -hmm. with the reparations right now, and the time frame also. Things have been so tight, and the COVID did not help yeah. in making sh making it more accessible and making outreach more 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 possible. And activities, some of the most activities had to be cut short yeah. uh, or, or even eliminated because of COVID. So there has been those challenges were there. Now we have to work around that. The, the, it's been done, it's yeah. been done, we need to work around that. The other part would be the resources, um, both the, T, the TRRC and CSOs, uh, you know, resource wise in terms of personnel, yeah. in terms of funding, are, are limited. And there's usually, you know, most CSOs will, do, will identify with this, like where you're working a project and you have a funding gap and you, yeah. are, you have to stop because you're looking for more money yeah. to continue. Money makes the world, world, uh, world go around. You cannot yeah. do the work without money. So those are the resources that you need, really. Uh, strong. Most CSOs, um, most people are doing work part-time. Mm -hmm. Or the project, what they work on, is not is not the main thing because yeah. of the nature of the what we are the, the environment. So you have to be engaged in other, other activities. So it makes it, um, you know, uh, less, uh, you know, we have less resources, so, yeah. so to speak, when it comes to going around and, and engaging with the victims and making sure that their needs are taken care of and the information that they need, the service mm -hmm. that they need. The reparations, like Ajiti was saying, it's not just about, you know, you know, you, you, you've been awarded, so, you know, you're ready. Yeah. But uh, we've come in since, uh, for example, uh, some people that have never seen it don't know what a check is mm -hmm. and they're receiving a check for the first time. Uh, and <laughs> and we don't we people don't know where the banks are yeah. and how to handle it. people that don't have ID and people that don't understand really how these all these things are very confused. Mm. Um, she talked about the different violations and how this was come up uh, came up they came up with computing those numbers. Yeah. That's good for us to know. That's good. We can quickly understand it. But it's difficult for one victim to say yeah. that. Yeah. And Sumana yeah. and I were arrested and we were in the prison at the same time. Exactly. How come and Sumana yeah. is p getting paid more, more. Mm -hmm. than I am being paid? They don't know that maybe at every night when I was sleeping peacefully in my cell, mm -hmm. I mean, it was not the best of environments that we have it in common. Yeah. Somebody's coming into your cell every night and, 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 and torturing you. Yeah. So you would get that violation. So those are things that now we now have to go out mm -hmm. and make sure that these are understood because it can cause conflict 
and further sure. affect the reconciliation process and prosecution yeah. because when you are stuck within pro with the, within the within the process of reparation mm -hmm. it will be very difficult to to go forward yeah. and you know work on reconciliation we are, you know we are still have very fragile communities around the, around the country yeah. where we had you know victims within the community still having friction among them among families mm -hmm. this can potentially exacerbate that so we need to make sure that the resources and uh, and uh, the information is there and making sure that we are constantly engaging with them and also giving them the support we, they need. Yeah. Psychosocial support, for example, is one of the key things that should have been happening even before the reparation started. But mm. because of the resources, yeah. in both times of time, and also the number of psychosocial experts that are available in the country to do, mm. the, to do that. Because it, the moment you say, start hearing about reparations, mm -hmm. it's triggering for most yeah. victims. It reminds you of the pain that sure. you are in. Uh, the money money or no money it reminds you of the pain that you are in and then Absolutely. now you have all this confusion around and the stress around mm -hmm. you know what is a check where do, where is the where are the banks yeah. you know and then also the families where you have big families where now you have to deal with the issue of you know who gets what who how gets much what, yeah. yes so those are all things that um, CSOs now have the work mm -hmm. because the TRRC the <laughs> they are moving on yeah. and then it is now the CSOs really that ought to step up and make sure that the victims are taken care of and we handle this properly so that we can move on to the reconciliations element of it to the prosecutions and uh, you know all the reforms that need to happen for us sure. for the never again to, okay. to happen so can you i mean and this has touched on a very salient point earlier i did highlight um that we've had complaints here and there yes. you know and and even with victims as well she's, she's touched on a very salient point the issue of um having victims some victims complain that you know i was arrested for the same crime or maybe for the same accusation with Mr. X, but he's getting paid more than me. Um, how do you deal with that? Yeah, you will receive victims um, with their complaints saying that um, I, I was um, involved with SO in, in a, um, the same crime mm -hmm. or violation, or here comes he's paid uh, more, mm -hmm. more, more than me. But uh, going through, through um, SO's statement, you will find out that there are different forms of violations involved. Yeah. This is why SO was paid more than you. So it has to be um, our own understanding mm -hmm. to um, basically know that, you know, um, when I was making my statement, SO wasn't there. When SO was making his statement, mm -hmm. I was not there. So I might not know wh what exactly um, SO narrated yeah. to the statement takers. So okay. we were not there when the um, violations and abuses happened. Mm -hmm. We only um, rely on the statements received. Okay. So um, through these statements, mm -hmm. we can establish the fact and also um, um, assess it to give um, the individual um, the required um, compensation. Okay. So actually, we don't have anything to add or change. Mm -hmm. We depend on the statements received. So we have to understand it at, at our level that um, maybe SO did not tell me the truth, that um, he was involved in um, different violations. Okay. Because yesterday I received this information from one boy saying that um, I met with my colleagues and they said to me um, they were, were paid more than me. Mm. I went through the database, checked, the violations were not the same. And he was saying that no, he was um, he he was only caught and then taken to a particular place and then released. Going through the statement, that wasn't the case. I just, I I I just wanted to add yeah. something that is also very important that we are coming across about the TRRC and there are some of the um, CSOs that are currently involved in supporting the victims. And this is that one of the things that is coming out when people went to make their statements. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel that some of the details were necessary, or you know how people sometimes they just ha they don't say certain things. Mm -hmm. um, you were asked this question. You the TRRC went by what you said in your statement that what what happened to you. Mm -hmm. So if you were tortured at some point and you didn't say it mm -hmm. for one reason or other because maybe your memory la memory lapsed or because you were too embarrassed to say some of the things that yeah. happened to you, that cannot be considered. Mm -hmm. Even you, if you and if you and I have the same ex experience, the same thing. You can get paid more than I yeah. because you explicitly stated what happened to you, sure. but I did not. I only said some some of it. Mm. 
or maybe a few. So I, whatever violations that I that I that they come across on my st in my statement yeah. is what um, what I would be awarded. Yeah. And then whatever violations, it could be if I have two violations, um, I'll be awarded for two violations. If you have five violations, you'll be awarded for five violations. And that can that's not what explains the difference. Right. Now, at this point in time, not much we can do because the statements have been taken. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the pages have dried. We have to move on and try to. Um, understand this and get them to understand and to accept and move on to see are they what other what other what other uh, reparations mm. would be possible mm. because reparation is not just monetary mm. we also we have to we need to focus and also look at the broader money even if you are given 10 million it will it will you can consume it within a short period of time but we need services for mm. these victims for a lot of people for them for example schools for their ch school school support education support for their children those are the bigger picture that we should be now trying to focus on yeah. and really the money like as is very important they need it and it is it is their right they must have it and whether the money is small or not it is bes be beside the point right now we deal with that and if we need to look for more money mm. or ask for more money that is something we want to now look at do we want to ask for more money what about other services medical is a very important part for most of the victims mm. can we get medical services for these victims long-term medical services in the long run so um, that is one of the reasons, the main reasons why these complaints are coming up. Yeah. Uh, just to buttress what Kajeto was saying and support sure. her. Sure. Because we have been in the field and have experienced that the way they explained their, when they gave their statements was different. Oh. And the TRRC, like uh, Kajeto said, they were not there when the violations was, where ha was happening. And they, the victim, you were not there, I was not there when you were making your statement. So I don't know what you said to the TRRC. Sure. So sure. that's the main All thing. Right. So um, earlier I did say that we were expecting um, another guest. I mean, who would join us? I mean, he's also not new to this uh, platform, very much involved in the TJ process. He's a journalist and a human rights activist as well. Um, my colleague and brother, Flex Dan, I mean, Yusuf Taylor is his name. Welcome to the program. It's always a pleasure to be next to you and um, talking about how we really make sure that we support our people to earn back their dignity. Yeah. Indeed. Um, we're happy to have you on this platform. Um, so, you've been very much involved in reporting um, issues around the entire transitional justice process, um, especially with the TRRC and even the victims' reparations that has been going on as well. Um, what, what are some of the issues that you've come across? Um, first of all, um, the TRRC, obviously the hearing, public hearing, has set the record straight. Yeah. And um, us in the media, um, QTV um, certainly, and the other media houses have been covering that. And that's certainly gives the basis. And now the reparation stage, mm -hmm. we understand it has been postponed, the report has been postponed until end of September. And um, obviously over 205 um, million um, dollars, which I reported when at, from the TRRC's press conference. But it's not just about the money. Mm -hmm. um, people need to go on with their lives. Yeah. Um, some of these people, um, say the April 10, 11, these people were just like me and you. Yeah. Um, their life have been kept at a standstill for some of them, and medical treatment. How can we have long-term permanent medical treatment? I think it's a very important, not just all the time flying our people out. Mm -hmm. you know? It's also, it, it hurts somebody who's not feeling well mm -hmm. traveling abroad. It's a very difficult process. And you can even maybe add to the injury. So how can we make sure we have that here? But finally, just to say, um, the TRRC and the government mm -hmm. cannot do it alone. Um, they mint maintain the biggest responsibility. Diaspora has also chipped in mm -hmm. um, from what the TRRC said. And we're also calling on the supporters, other likewise supporters, Gambians in, in the country mm -hmm. to really, if we put a shoulder around these victims, I believe the process will be successful. If we just leave the victims, mm -hmm. we just throw money, a lot of money at them, it will not resolve the problem. They need mm -hmm. compassion. They need the empathy. Yeah. And there are many ways we can do that. All yeah, of us. I think, I mean, this also boils down to what Antisera highlighted earlier, the need to have um, a strong foundation, a, a certain mechanism that we ensure continuity uh, post TRRC. Mm -hmm. How important do you think this is as well? That is very, very important. It will give stability. The government needs to start looking into that because right now, um, when you see maybe there's not that much traction, mm -hmm. everybody is looking at the end game of September without having a vision of to what could happen. Where do we go from there? 
and I think it's very important. There are question marks. Um, obviously, we know we have the National Human Rights Commission set up. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be another independent body to do that or what? We certainly cannot afford to lose all the knowledge base of the TRRC. So the continuity is important to make sure that it is faced and that we don't have a stopgap where after TRRC, mm -hmm. nothing happens. We lose all that institutional memory yeah. going forward. So I think that is certainly very important for the success of the TRRC and also to make sure we prioritize the victims as well. Yeah. So I would like us to switch over to the local language so we can also accommodate our um, audience out there so everyone who else is feel involved and be part of this very important discussion we're having. But before that, um, as a journalist, we know this is, um, you know, usually a very busy period for journalists and, and even for activists. We're going into elections. Um, I did earlier ask um, Antisira and Khadija to, um, regarding the importance of having I mean, issues around the TRRC recommendations, the, the reparations I mean, process, and especially the entire TJ process included in our political discussions, especially mm -hmm. within this period. It's something we shouldn't shy away from. And the reason why I said that, we all know that this government was set up as a transitional government. And the, one of the most important transitions is security sector reforms and obviously transitional justice constitutional um, reform is there, all these other. So we have to go back to the basics, to the essence of um, this government and see where they have delivered. And obviously there will be shortcomings. Yeah. Um, there will always be shortcomings. But then how will the next government come in, in? Mm -hmm. whoever that will be, whether it's the current government that will continue or one of the alternatives? They need. We need to know, do they intend to um, implement the recommendations fully, partially, what is their direction? With human rights, because of the way that they treat human rights cannot be separated from this transitional justice process. So I think um, the government, economically, there are other, tra there are other transitional process, mm -hmm. processes as well, which should be featured, I believe. Um, but as a country, um, for us to get that democracy yeah. that we need, a lot of people say um, we are moving from authoritarian democracy to a more <laughs> <laughs> open <laughs> democracy. Yeah. And it's usually a chaotic you know, process mm -hmm. for that to happen. But um, certainly for us to get to that pro um, point where we have a real democracy mm -hmm. which is developed that can encapsulate what the people feel, we need to focus on the core essence of reforms, um, certainly in all aspects. Yeah. security sector, human rights, transition, constitution, etc. Right. It must be in the political um, discourse coming to 2021 December. Very well, thank you. Um, Flexi, yeah, yes, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I just want to uh, talk about the urgent interim reparations that mm -hmm. the TRRC um, offered at the beginning of the process, the truth-seeking process. Mm -hmm. We understand um, there we are victims that um, basically benefited from that um, support mm -hmm. and uh, we want to urge them to uh, to be fair to their colleagues mm. the entire victims um, population yeah. that um, has not benefited from the support um, looking at the limited um, resources the financial resources that we have we cannot go beyond um, what we have and for us, we want all the victims to enjoy that particular uh, benefit that we have within the um, process. So um, this is why um, those that benefited from the in, uh, urgent interim reparations, their reparations were, were capped at 100,000. So we want them to understand that and understand that it is because of the limited resources mm -hmm. that the TRRC has. So this is why we are doing this. And to be fair to the rest of the victims. So this is. Uh, she raises an important point, which I um, couldn't ignore. Certainly, but with the interim reparations, which is very important, I believe over what the CRRC chairperson said, over 13, around 13 million yeah. was spent, which is a significant amount of money. Exactly. They cannot, and about four victims traveled for this Turkish medical trip. Mm -hmm. But however, um, an assessment is needed. You know, when you send somebody out on treatment, TRRC, I'm sure, would have, as soon as they returned, mm -hmm. 
mm. assess them. I don't think that was done for all of them, at least with one of them. So that way you'll be able to see the benefit of that trip actually. Yeah. Um, certainly if they had benefited and they were fine medically, but with one of them at least, I know that wasn't the case. So the um, trip was certainly significant mm -hmm. for most of them to be very fair to the yeah. TRRC, the commission and the government. Um, they, m out of the four of them, I believe three of them received medical treatment and support. And it was, it's really, really improved them now. Um, one of them seriously struggling with the arm, arm in yeah. the arm, which I wrote about. And, um, s and another one, Yusuf Ambai, um, so I believe it's maybe two. Yusuf Ambai actually um, didn't get, due to the circumstances, mm -hmm. he had a difficult circumstances which was beyond the TRRC's control. For example, the hospital where he was supposed to be treated was turned into a COVID so, center. Oh, okay. So he couldn't get his medical treatment there. Um, so I've been publishing about these things, but I believe if the TRRC assesses yeah. what the benefit is after a treatment or after any service that they provide, then that will really help them going forward so that, you know, that cap will be certainly justified. Maybe it's justified yeah. for the rest who have been treated well, but certainly for those who haven't got conclusive treatment, mm -hmm. there needs to be a little bit more done to help them to yeah. move on. Right. Their lives. Just to say this, um, they were all assessed except for Yusufa. Okay. Umi was assessed, okay. you know, okay. we paid um, for the psycho social, um, psychotherapy for Umi. We were picking her from her, her house mm -hmm. to the center mm -hmm. daily okay. for the services. We were paying for the services. Okay. And if, even though we were picking her up, we were giving her something to yes. take care of herself. Yes. And for use of her, I personally, um, spoke to him about the um, assessment after mm -hmm. his treatment okay. from Turkey. Mm -hmm. we, we are searching for the available institution to provide the services to him. I understand, yes. And immediately he re returned. He was compla complaining about, um, you know, some challenges, cash challenges and so. Okay. I directed Yusufa to the, um, to the reparations department to come collect his reparations, likewise other um, April 10, 11 victims. Mm -hmm. okay. But then, you know, to my surprise, it turned out uh, negative. Yeah. Right. So, 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 so I, I just wanted I to, to, I mean, Delver, we already have yeah. these issues, yeah. and that's not going to change. The resources, like I said, yeah. resources are very limited. And I think I want to just buttress before you go into the local language on something very important that, uh, that Yusuf has said here, which is really making sure that this is sustainable. It is not sustainable spending 13 million to take yeah. care of four victims. We need to look at how do we take care of them here. Yes, their conditions uh, are, are not uh, conditions that could be treated here, perhaps. Yeah. Mm. But we need even to. Be, the government has is responsible for these people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. exactly. Whether we give them money, whether we whether the, whatever operations we are giving them now, that the operation that they are giving right now has nothing to do with their medical the responsibility of, of the government for their mm -hmm. medical care. Thank you. That is just uh, reparations, which mm -hmm. is a compensation. So all of you dampai, you see, you see, in the in mm -hmm. the Mandinka languages, right? Mm -hmm. So that is his right. That has nothing to do with his care. His care yeah. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with his care. Yeah. Well, that that hundred thousand or one million that is for operation, that is for him for the pain that he has suffered. Mm -hmm. His medical care and the, his livelihood is still on the government if he cannot. Okay. So for, for, for all of for whether it's for Yusufa, whether it's for Umi, or all of them that have medical issues, all of them that uh, their educations have been stalled, their children, their family situation have been, you know, their livelihoods have been affected. Mm -hmm. It is on the, on the government to take care of them. So that is beside, that has, I don't believe that we should be mixing the reparations mm -hmm. with that the need and the responsibility of the government mm -hmm. when it comes to caring for the citizens that they, that are suffering because of what they did. Okay. So, so um, it's well, getting more interesting here. Unfortunately, I'm being notified <laughs> that we have about 10 minutes oh. and I would like us to, um, you know, at least say a few words in, in the local language as well so we can accommodate our audience um, out there who, I mean, cannot speak English or don't understand English. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure you and um, Flex would do well off. I know <laughs> he doesn't speak Mandinka, <laughs> um, but I mean, Kadija will help us in Mandinka as well. So, okay, you know, um the last program be feeling how much I see the new Kodorel program. I think that the new Kodorel program is a very transitional justice process. I think um the new Kodorel program is a very transitional transitional justice process. I think that the new Kodorel program is a very transitional justice process. 
kuyate mo mungi bay ko ci trrc um anti siran daw nak mom ya ngeen di ko fi gis um bay ko anaket um yusuf telo di flex dan mom suñu nata ngola da fayengu ci tashibar activist lay tamit um kon ma ndeka dalal anti sira bu ko defé ma dugal um khadija du dan yusuf flex a jerejef ansbara comme quel ministre ñu am ñi jema jema tenka rek ci lu gaaw gaaw ali ñu fi li ñu fi ni comme ni ko waxe transitional justice process bi mo ñu fi mo ñu fi indi ana ket neka organization bo xamne ñu ngay yengu ci mairie support victim ci neka victim li ñu oyé victim dat organization manam ñu ay victim yi nga xamne dañ am ay violation or metit metit yo xamne ngur ga len ko tek ci 22 years fi ay jamé ne ko ñu sos organization bi benn ci victim led organization ila along with the victim center solo sending foundation Uh, wave uh, as as well mm -hmm. uh, so ñoo ñoo nekk ci di yëngu di ci nga xamne direct victims yo xamne ñoo ko ñoo ko ñoo ko sos ñun ci li ñoo yëngu moy ñi nga xamne dañ reer té government bi saaku ñu mu doon lo xamne government moko ci ci seen loxo la jaaré wala ñi nga xamne tamit dañ ñeen reey té jaaralu ñu ko ci yoon té nguur gi ñoo ko ñoo ko ñoo ko ñoo ko ñoo ko def so ci loolu la ana kéd di yëngu ci li ñoo waxtanté lu am solo moy li nga xamne moy dem on especially mire reparation ci moy dampa yi ñoo fay victime ci fi ñeeka ni ñep dega nañ ko news paper bi am nañ ay yu bari yuñ sey dega tamit no xamne hejna mu genalu won mu demé nonu di comme ni ñoo xey ñene ñi nga xamne ñi ngi yaaka dañuy ñoo len fay ñi ñi ñom ñom ñu ngi ñu ngi len arrest on for example té ki mom lañ mo gëna am xaaliss keneen ki yoy yeb mu nek ay yo xamne luñ wara address la te ñu ngi sey liggéey pour jëm mais choné ñu understand TRRC bi seen process ici naka lañ ko naka lañ ko naka lañ ko naka yiñ sata yiñ tekib naka lañ ko tégué yoy dafa am solo pour ñu pour ñu wax lay gën ko léral wa li ñu li ci il fi moy né unfortunately moy né time amu tour pour ñu li luñ warona waxtaan la bala preparation bi di door de forum bi ni ak jotaay bi dafa warona xew ak continue di xew ci télé yi ci radio yi ci biir community ci ci di banta bayyi pour ñu ñu prepare victime ci ñu xam sarta yi tek naka la su ko defé nga mëna xam kan expect amna ñeno ñi xamne sa ben tay comme victime ci ñi nga xamne ñep dañ register nekku da ñep lañ ñep ñoo qualify under the human rights violation that the TRRC has the mandate TRRC sen mandate yena yena façon yi bokuñ ci ka 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 jotu yi la yu de melni ay yefi 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 souf ak yefi dismissal kuñ da hasa liggey lolu TRRC bi duñ ko duñ bok bok ci statement bi so su boba do mëna bok ci dampay bi yoy yep ay waxtan yu doon warona warona xew la bala yi di commencer waye compagnon dañ be fini ñun civil society organization ci ak working di liggey ak TRRC bi ak keneen partners yi ñu ngay jëma def suñu kemta lay katan pour make sure ñu ngay dem ci victime ci ñi nga ak ñi nga xamne ño 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 ñom ñom la affect pour waxtan ak ñom genné na explainal parce que suñ ko defut légui ñu ñu ngay wax mi reconciliation ñi nga wax mi prosecution yo xamne war na ñu daf ñoo daf ñoo dafa daf ñoo tié place bo xamne duñ fay gaawa joggé jëfé jëfé yo yo ko ay jëfé jëfé yo ko tension yo ko pressure yi ak ak yi nga xamne tension yi nekk ci suñu digante community ci ben tay mo lool mo muñu ko muñu ko wédi mu ngi fa buguñ mbiri xaaliss ak mbiri dampay bi ni tenka 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 process bobu non so buga dañu gëna mëna am ñu ñaa ñaa wa ICT ji ak yeneen institution ji xamne pour ñu gëna yaatal forum bi ak wa kiw tv sa parce que yeen ñep am ngeen ci am ngeen ci am ngeen ci di ngeen yaatal ay forum bi fu ko amne gëna mëna ñew di leralal victime kiw tv kiw radio bi tamit amna ci solo gëna mëna ñew gëna leralal victime dinañ gëna dinañ gëna am waxtan bi ni waye ma duggal kadijatu mu waxtu di ci manika den ma duggal tam flex set am bu ko defé ñu ñu tagato da am ñu liggé 7 minutes kadijatu mbaati ngol mbali jam bi pour ka kal ka chandi comme na transitional justice abel la ri ñaadi le Um, sakora ko TRRC la um, fanna la bari sayinte mbi ju suña bol la be mol mi yalon ko um, TRRC la kisi kisi roya yi tandi la ko wala mo victime molti mm -hmm. be um, do man dindi kam mo la pour kaje ko ke ju suña bu kole yala mi yalon ko e, bulata no wala kono be yalon ne ko na flo man taraje sayinte mi yalon ko ase mo mo ju su landi le bari kay ju suña bu kay tandi la ko ñun do man di nguta dorom nga kalamu tale mu nekete la adun ak kole ya ñi tol ni te bele ya tala so sayinte mbo wote mbole to bari fanam ba mol dan na fanam pour ka je ko em menu ya lon ko yela ju suña bota ñen tembo la ndam ma ngol se ka chaano bari em ka ka je ko ye kari ju ñi ne la ye kari ju suña bu ñi ne la yi man te ju suña bu ñi na andu ñu tenen kari bi ase ke non da be da bulata ku kilo ngola kono bari um, ñantale ngaaju be fanam birin wo mari ñembira bala kuma kango dilé té man taraji 
biri fanan bela kuma kan dila ata mari nyim mantara je ase keno ate kuma lfo miya lonko ite ma wo kala muta adun tol bira be kelan tol mantara je kaito on tol kata mani wala sainte kaito ay minfo mfanan ka wala safin ka hape ka jube akaila kole anyin ka nyanta minfe nke ju so nyabu wala bela fila fanan mini ya lonko wulle do mandin soto ko manto membo ko am jara lola karola lem ban karam bunjola karola wala business wala karola ni na ta kalam ta tem fananko ila to la jusu nyabo ni amam futa ni ndon ta hapuma lafta mo be faham ro soto kayitande ko do mandinne biji o do mandin o ite do mandin nana jele sai wakil do roy mo nyu fanan fanan se do mandin nana je mo pro nyu ko noto di adam male wote nyantale nga nyu ko noto di adam ma okay abarka bake am mudugal flex am yete men ga wonyo ra sa gis gis ci li nga xamantene moy transitional justice process bi ignore_time_segment_in_scoring so then the um, report be, no, the guy release, no, we cannot go. In the head, it's in white paper. Boba, what time be, TRRC, our preparation, see, they're going to make a big discussion point coming to the end of the year. The guy's name, the Harley's with this, 205 million, the guy who has faced reparations. I'm the Harley's with this, no, this, I'm the Nancy. I'm the Nancy. I'm the Nancy. I'm the Gambian, I'm the Nancy. I'm the support, I'm the donor, I'm the donor, I'm the guy's support, I'm the Nancy. Um, na guy support process be because government be si bop ham rek de komuna def government amna responsibility munte ñun tam amna responsibility pour def sun law um, around victims so suma message bi just pour finalize na um bu gane en trrc you make sure ne du je september na am continuation because afa am lu ñoo institutional memory moy ham ham bi yep bu trrc am lolu warun ko ñaka te pour victims yi muna am Reparations, the armed transitional justice, both successful. Lulu Fogrek, you maintain it. The Lulu Nunko Muna Am Feke Am Nen Big Gap. So, you get in your government. Then you want way forward. Then you get in your institution more co use. Then you get in your way forward. Then you get in your way September, you get one month or after elections, you saw God decide Lulu. Lulu Jeff Flex, Lulu Amna Solo Torop, Finger Danile, Fogna, Um, hopefully soon you are next time ya kana lu lu jara ba hela te nen ci gëna waxtaan da lu am solo la moy ban institution moy jël responsibility bi legi um ganaaw bu tiara ci sen bande jey xamna ne ci so ñu ngi def sen kentu lay katan waye ngurtam warna mëna ba hel lolu kon um bu ko defé ñu tagato waxtu jena tag um let me let me start with with Khadija tu yeah okay sura do lesen yeah the final words okay um mbade ngol mbal tentu la bayren ka ben kacha men belan ka diya mum le min ya lon ko jama jama man kan wo moy ima angale kan wo moy bare sa faale ko ni momo bina pour kane la jusu nya bota ti yaraati e sa fero ke ni la id card ye nana mi ya lon ko kuta malam wala la votes card ana nyanta ke la kuta malam ti fana ani fana na tara i mari i man nano bari be mole ki ki la e sa fero ke sa kaitin din sa fedo ron kaitan di ko e tele o mari bula pour ay nana nga ay ni la um jusu nya bo nyinta adu se la id card fana la o kan ani wo mari la id card ye beta ay yadi la pour ay nati nan utumola asinela jisu nyabo soto um, ani mfana um, mbesa kalamta ko jama jama dol bi jemini yalla sain sain mm. na kay to min fintita wol to man tarabala mm. bari besa wakil doron ka je ko to bina fintila kay ti dotol mi yalla ko wolen supplementary yeah. list okay abo ko time o bantal tak 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 um, so andesira what to be jena flex um rafa men ni filanyo e magien tay mm. by hopefully din nyo at um, sure. next week or some other time um gena yatal wartan bi Um, I'm afraid this is all the time permits, but um, hopefully we would be uh, back on this platform probably next week or, you know, um, in the very near future to continue to, to have this discussion, which is very important. So on behalf of Flex, I mean, Antisira and Kadija too, we say thank you for watching and until we come your way next time.